April 13th, 1968. February 12th, 1995. August 11th, 1996. These three seemingly arbitrary dates might have no meaning to you when you hear them, unless it accidentally is a special day in your family. If one of those days was, was insignificant in your life, then you just heard three random dates spread out over about 30 years, and I bet you've already forgotten most of what I just said, because they don't have any meaning for you. But for the Alvarez-Hanks family, these are very significant dates. They're not our birthdays or our anniversaries. Nobody died. I wonder if you can imagine why those three dates are significant for us. What about if I say today's date to you four families, November 6th, 2022. It's significant for you, I bet, as you prepare to make promises in just a few minutes to bring up your children in the Christian faith and life on this most special day for these precious children as they receive the sacrament of baptism. November 6, 2022 is significant for all of us here as well because it marks the day that we join with you. We join with you families, we join with you godparents in doing all in our power to support these children in their lives in Christ. And when we get to that part, we're gonna say it like we mean it because we do mean it, don't we? While today is their special day, we're lucky. We get the chance to be here to witness you, to witness as fellow Christians in your church, to receive this sacrament of baptism as it takes place in just a few minutes. Baptism is our entry point into the Christian life. It's the full initiation by water and the Holy Spirit into Christ's body, which is what we believe as Episcopalians. After all four of these kiddos, and then we have three more this afternoon are baptized, all who are witnessing those baptisms will join their voices together and say with meaning, we receive you into the household of God. So right now we're preparing to join together as a community to welcome our newest Christians to the church. And today's gospel reading appointed for this feast day helps us understand a little bit more about all the saints known and unknown, my favorite part about all saints. This we just heard from the gospel is called the Sermon on the Plain, and it's found in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is speaking up to his disciples in this setting, and I want you to try to imagine Jesus is also speaking to us these same words over 2,000 years later. This sermon that he gives to the disciples comes on the heels of the elect 12 being chosen, miracles and teachings and healings being witnessed. And that's a really important backdrop for our disciples. And it's also important for us, those of us who are longtime Christians and those of us who are brand new to understand. Because we've been called to follow Jesus, just like the disciples. And I'm guessing you said yes since you're here. We know the stories of miracles and healings, right? And we hopefully all agree that we are beloved by God and there's nothing that can happen that will separate us from that. That's the backdrop for the gospel. And it's the backdrop for our families who've made the decision to bring up their children in the church and in the Christian faith. So let's just all agree that we're called. We can believe that God loves us and does marvelous and inexplicably remarkable things in our lives and in the lives of those we love and those we don't even know. So how does it sound 
to hear that sermon on the plane when we think about those teachings, both to the disciples who were present and to us as disciples. How did that sound to you? Now, I like to focus, maybe you do too, on the Beatitudes parts. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. I can get down with that pretty easy. But we don't like to focus on the woes, do we? that follow these blessings. I would argue that that maybe is where the real teaching of being a disciple rises to the level of our consciousness today. Because Jesus is teaching us about the kingdom of God. Jesus was teaching those early disciples who were just beginning to understand what it meant to follow Jesus. That there are things that God sees as good. And there are things that God flatly rejects from the kingdom. Things like keeping our resources for ourselves alone without sharing them with the poor and those in need. Things like failing to feed the hungry when we ourselves have more than enough to eat. And things like failing to see that everyone, everyone deserves to flourish. And also that being a Christian requires us to love our enemies, to pray for them. And as long as they're not actively harming us, to remain in relationship with those that we would rather reject or who we've marginalized because it just makes us too uncomfortable to include them. If you're like me, you like the blessed or use part far more than you like the woes to you part. But it's the whole entirety of the kingdom. We should aspire. And we should have things that we avoid if we are truly committed to being the disciples that God is calling us to be. So today we observe one of our big feast days in the life of the church, All Saints Day. And while we celebrate, I hear those ringing blesseds and woes in my ears. And I am so far from a saint, that's for sure. But perhaps we're wrong in thinking of saints as perfected people, somehow superhuman, avoiding all those woes all the time. Our former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, has this to say about saints. When we get together to celebrate the saints, we celebrate those who have given us evidence of God, who have made God believable by how they have lived and how they have died. They are the people who make mute the argument that there is no God and that God finally wins the day, doesn't say anything about perfection. Paul writes in the letter to the Ephesians in today's epistle that we have obtained an inheritance. That's the very first line of the epistle. And on All Saints Day, let us recognize that inheritance as we welcome our newest Christians into the body of Christ in the church We say we will choose to continue that inheritance for those who are joining us today and in the days and weeks yet to come. November 6th, 2022 is the start of something new for you all. Today, for all of you, I would invite you to remember your own baptism, even if you don't really remember it. Join with it in remembering with your baptism. In just a few minutes, we'll all stand and affirm our baptismal covenant. We'll remember that we are creating an inheritance that the saints of God have handed down to us generation upon generation, and we are to hand it down for generations to come. I wonder, will we choose 
to be the evidence that God is at work in the world as we join with the saints who are known and unknown. Bishop Frank Logue of the Diocese of Georgia preached on an All Saints Day several years ago and just reminds us that we don't define the saints, God does. And so we are invited to join with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit through our own baptisms, through our new baptisms, and join that inheritance of the saints today and every day. Every day we have left, we can show the world that God created us, God desires us, and God invites us into the body of Christ. And we can't wait for you four new ones to join us as we witness the miracle of new birth in Christ. Amen.